It isn't difficult to see the appeal of having a hot tub at home, whether it's relaxing after a hard day at work or spending time with friends and family just enjoying the bubbles. But there are two costs when it comes to having a hot tub, buying it and running it. So today, what I'm gonna do is run through ways you can maybe reduce those costs and even run a hot tub for free. I'm gonna start this video talking about the different types of hot tubs. So if you've already got one and you're here just for the money saving tips, go to the bar at the bottom and go right along to money saving. If you haven't taken the plunge, however, you're in the right place. When you're choosing your hot tub, there's a few key things you need to take into account. Number one is your budget. Number two is the space to put it. Number three, the availability of power. And number four, just exactly what accessories or requirements you have of the particular tub. The cost of hot tubs starts from just a few hundred pounds for an inflatable portable unit up to tens of thousands of pounds for a hard shell unit. You can even add a wave system to be able to do resistance swimming in one if it's big enough and you've got deep enough pockets. Typically, inflatable portable hot tubs cost between 300 and 1500 pounds depending on the size and whether or not there's additional functions. Your hard shell units tend to be from about 3000 pounds typically to about 10000 pounds. Though as I said before, there are exceptions. There are also wood heated tubs and in-ground spas, but we're not going to talk about those today. We're just going to focus on the above ground hot tubs that run off electricity. Let's start with the prerequisites. First and foremost, every hot tub needs flat level ground to be placed upon, because once it's full of water, it will literally weigh a ton. Also, you'll need access to somewhere to be able to drain your tub, which you'll have to do every couple of months. Now let's talk about the differences between the two types of tubs. The portable units are generally inflatable, often round and not as big. Also, all the components to filter, heat and blow air generally tend to be in devices outside of the pool, which means you can upgrade or replace components much easier. The other is typically a square unit with trim around the outside and a plastic or acrylic interior which is moulded around the seating layout which you choose. All the components to heat and run the various pumps and filters are actually in between the plastic and the trim along with lots and lots of insulation. Aside from the physical differences, they also work quite differently. So when you're talking about the portable spars, they tend to have inflatable sides, so therefore they have an air pump which keeps them inflated, and it's that same air pump that actually pumps the bubbles through the water, and that's what gives you that jacuzzi feel. So what that means is it's pulling air from the outside and then putting that through the water, which can often feel a little bit cool, but it means that you can maintain those bubbles. Whereas a fixed unit tends to use water jets. Now what that means is that the device inside, the pumps inside, they pull the warm water from inside the hot tub and actually blow it back at you which means the temperature is far easier to maintain and it also feels like you can get a bit more of a massage from it. Some of these hot tubs also have air pumps as well just to give that nice bubbly effect. Whichever type of unit you have insulation is really important because that's what allows the water to stay warm and the warmer the water is the less money you'll spend heating it back up. In a portable unit you have the outside material and then air which generally works quite well as an insulator but not as well as a unit such as this that has foam and insulation between the inner and the outer bits. Whichever, it's crucial that you get a lid. Heat rises, so it's really important that you trap in as much of that heat as possible whenever you're not in the hot tub. There are also additional features you can add to both types of hot tub, whether that is Bluetooth music, LED lighting, which tends to be standard in these units, headrests or additional seating because the inflated units don't tend to have seats, floating drinks holders, there's an array of things you can actually buy. But one that's really worth looking out for is smart functionality. Now what I mean by that is the options within the menu system to be able to choose when the unit heats up rather than just running either on or off. That gives you a lot of control and we'll come back to that a little later in the video. There is no right or wrong answer as to which unit's best. At the end of the day, it's down to your personal circumstances. They'll both give you hours and hours of pleasure with family and friends. Here are some pros and cons to help you decide which unit might be best suited to you. Advantages of the inflatable unit are price. It is inevitably much cheaper. Portability. It's great that if you want to move it to a different location, you have the choice. It's easier to maintain. And crucially, it can be put away when you're not using it. Advantages of the fixed unit are contoured seating, better insulation, so therefore more heat saving and less cost, water jets as opposed to just air jets, and of course it's durable to be able to give you all year functionality. Disadvantages of the inflatable are it isn't as durable, it's seasonal though there are versions that actually do allow for all year use, 
They're typically smaller and therefore have less seats, which means that you are sitting a little closer to your friends and family and there will be a little bit of footsie whether you like it or not. And therefore, because of the insulation, you'll also find there is a little bit more energy required to maintain the heat. The disadvantages of the fixed unit First, it's really hard to move once it's in place, even when it's empty. You'll need a small army of people to help you. The maintenance costs are higher because you will have to service it in addition to buying all the chemicals. It's out all year, which means you have to look after it all year. And last, but very definitely not least, cost. They are expensive units. Both units will need a power supply, either a weatherproof plug or an isolator switch, depending on how much power your hot tub needs. Some use 13 amp, some use 32 amp. Both will need to be protected by a circuit breaker or RCD, so be sure to speak to an electrician before you make your purchase. Both will have decent residual values, so don't be too worried about how much you outlay up front because it'll still have a value at the end of the life with you providing you've looked after it. But the most important thing is for you to enjoy your hot tub experience without worrying about how much it's costing. So let's move on to that section and talk about how you can keep those costs to a minimum. There are two ongoing costs associated with a hot tub, in addition to occasionally servicing, and those are electricity and chemicals. Chemicals are relatively straightforward. They're an array of fantastic starter kits which will send you off with exactly the right products from day one. The instructions are in the box to be able to tell you how much to use based on how much water you've got, and then you just maintain it as you go along. I've put a link in the comments below as to how to access those starter packs on Amazon. Based on our experience, the chemicals you'll use the most are pH adjusters and chlorine. pH adjusters because if it gets too high or too low, you'll end up with cloudy water and also people with sensitive skin will not feel super comfortable. Chlorine because generally hot tubs are a perfect temperature and condition for germs to breed. So what the chlorine does is kills them dead to make sure you don't have any issues with that. You'll also need the testing sticks, which you'll use regularly to check the pH and the alkaline and the chlorine levels within the water. That will dictate how much chemicals you then have to use. Once you get a feel for which chemicals you use the most, it's definitely worth buying in bulk. A five kilogram tub of chlorine works out much cheaper per gram than a starter kit, but you need the starter kit at first. You can then use your five kilo just to top your starter kit bottles up as and when. Also worth making part of your hot tub chemical inventory is foam remover. There will be occasions where people get in the hot tub and maybe they've got some facial creams or body creams or suntan lotion on and all those things tend to bubble to the surface. What foam remover does is it makes them all stick together and go straight into your filter. Once you put that in, rinse the filter, your water will be nice and clean again, so it's worth keeping some in. The main expense, however, and the one I want to talk about now is electricity. First things first, just to clarify, whichever hot tub you have, it will use power to run its filters and to run the actual pumps. However, its big consumer is heating the water. You can find out what size heater your hot tub uses just by checking the specifications. This one behind me, for example, has a three kilowatt heater. So from there, you can work out what it costs to run. What it means by three kilowatts is that's the number of kilowatt units that it uses per hour to run. So our electricity tariff, for example, and you can check your own very easily, is about 16 pence per kilowatt. So if this is a three kilowatt heater, for every hour it would use three times 16 pence, which is 48 pence. So it's 48 pence per hour to run the heater. Now you can appreciate how that can quickly add up. So let's start to look at ways we can reduce the amount of times that your heater is actually running. Firstly, location. Now we've ascertained that your hot tub has got to be on a nice level surface, but do bear in mind the location in relation to the sun because the ambient temperature can really affect the temperature of the internal water on the unit. Therefore, if you choose a spot where the sun shines for as much of the day, you'll get free heating. Also, you may find a shelter helps with the ambient temperature too. Our hot tub is in the sun, but also under a shelter. So for example, at the moment, because we've got a very hot July, we've got our temperature down to 32.5 degrees. And yet today, after the sun, the hot tub had actually got up to 36 degrees without the heating being on. So ambient temperature makes a huge difference. But remember to keep that lid on, whatever the temperature, if you're not in the hot tub. If you're using one of the portable units, it's advantageous to put some sort of insulation mat underneath as well. Apart from protecting the bottom of your tub, it also means that you don't lose heat down into the ground either. Next up is understanding how long your tub needs to be heating for. This is based on an array of factors, such as the time of year, the amount of water, your preferred temperature, how well insulated your tub is, and how often you'll use it. So I'm going to stay as general as possible. Not surprisingly, hot tubs have to work harder in winter. Now, if you've got a portable unit, the chances are you'll put it away, but if you're willing to absorb the extra cost, 
just go for it because there's nothing better than getting into a hot tub on a cold day. But either way, you need to decide if you're going to maintain the temperature of the water or let it cool and then reheat it when you need it. Now, the disadvantage of letting it cool and reheat means you lose that spontaneity of just being able to jump in. However, if you know you're only going to use it at weekends, it's far more financially sensible to let it cool and reheat it when you need it. You may need to manage this heating and cooling process manually by physically turning the unit on and off, unless it has the smart functionality I mentioned earlier, in which case you'll be able to tell it when to turn the heater on and when to turn the heater off, which is really advantageous if you want to save money, which I'll get to in a moment. Ours, for example, has a weekend mode, where if you put it in that mode, it will allow the temperature to drop 10 degrees below our preference from Monday to Friday, but then warm it back up Friday afternoon, ready for the weekend. That can be a good saver. If you don't have the smart functionality within your hot tub, it's well worth buying some sort of timer device that will turn your heater on and off at predefined times. And I'll explain to you why. Not all electricity is equally priced. First, let's start with the commonest free power, solar. If you have solar panels, then you're already able to save money on heating your hot tub. It's just about choosing the hours that it works. Pay attention to when your panels generate the most power and coincide the heating with that. So if your panels are east facing, the chances are you'll get the most sun in the morning. If they're west facing, it'll be in the afternoon. If you're south facing, you'll get it all day. Plus remember, if your hot tub is placed in the sun, then the ambient light and ambient heat that comes from it will also reduce the electricity bill by keeping the temperature up. Bear in mind, however, that most solar panels do not run to their optimum capacity. So if you have a four kilowatt system, for example, it will probably optimally run at three kilowatts most of the time. So if you have a three kilowatt heater, it will run your hot tub and nothing else in the house. Of course, this is Britain, so daily sun is far from guaranteed. So it's a good idea to have a backup plan to get you through those cloudy days or winter months. And the solution might not be something that's occurred to you as a hot tub owner. However, plenty of electricity companies now have recognized there's a distinct increase in the number of electric cars on the road, and they've created tariffs specifically to give reduced price electricity during the night which inadvertently is the perfect solution for us hot tub owners too. My recommendation is Octopus Go. This tariff offers you normal rate 16 pence per kilowatt during the day, but between half past midnight and half past four in the morning, that rate drops to just five pence per kilowatt, which of course is also when the ambient temperature is gonna bring your hot tub water down. So it's the perfect time to be heating it at a third of the normal price. What's more, if you join Octopus using a referral link, which you absolutely should, then both you and the referrer get a £50 credit on their account. So, ask your friends to see if they're already on Octopus, and if they're not, then please use my link. It's in the comments below. You'll get £50, I get £50, everyone's a winner. Once you've joined, you can then get all your friends to join, and every time each one of them does, you get a £50 credit. We bought our hot tub behind me back in the icy month of May, and we've seen our average electricity consumption increase by about £35 per month, helped by our minor solar array, which is about 1.9 kilowatts. We're currently moving over to Octopus, so I'll see that total drop really soon. So think about it, follow these simple steps, recommend a friend onto the Octopus tariff once a month, and you'll get 50 pounds. Based on our costs, that means all you'll be paying for is chemicals every month because your electricity will be free. That's it for now, but thanks so much for watching and I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, it makes a big difference. And also, I would really appreciate your subscription. I make an array of videos that'll cover all sorts of topics that hopefully will interest you, but also potentially save you money. So I'd really appreciate your support. It gives me a, a warm glow inside to know that you're with me. Lastly, remember links to the chemicals that I mentioned before are in the description below, along with my Octopus referral link. So please, if you don't have any friends, use mine, jump on board, and whether you've got a hot tub, an electric car, or both, start saving money as soon as possible. Stay safe, and see you soon.